a citizen initiated zoning change petition of the city of Gardner zoning code. I will read the notice. City of Gardner notice of joint public hearing pursuant to general law chapter 40A subsection 5. Notice is hereby given that the city council and planning board will conduct a joint public hearing on Monday, November 7th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. in the city council chamber, room 219, city hall, 95 Pleasant Street, Gardner, to consider amending Chapter 675, the Zoning Code of the City of Gardner. The proposed amendment involves changing the zoning of 20 parcels of land along West Broadway from Kendall Pond Road West to the Templeton Line from Commercial 2 to General Residential 3 on the zoning map. Information regarding this amendment is available for viewing in the City Clerk's Office, the Department of Community Development and Planning, or on the City's webpage gardener-ma.gov. All persons interested in this matter and desire to offer testimony are invited to attend the hearing. T.T. Sirifan, City Clerk. The clerk will please do a roll call. Council Moon? Present. Council Bujo? Present. Council Craig Cormier? Present. Council Ronald Cormier? Present. Council John Lowitz? Present. Council Harder? Present. Council Heath? Present. Council Matt? Present. Councilor Tyros? Present. Councilor Walsh? Absent. President Kaczynskis? Present. Uh, Mr. Patez? Present. Mr. Paul Cormier? Mr. Stephen Cormier? Present. Mr. Shafron? Present. And Mr. Soares? Present. The quorum is present. Uh, this time I'd like to request a report from the planning board. I'd like to call Director Beauregard um, up for a quick report. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, just a real quick report. <laughs> At its October 11, 2022 meeting, the planning board voted unanimously to recommend um, the planning board voted unanimously to recommend cons consideration of the request uh, for the zoning amendment. Thank and that's, you. All, that's all I have. Okay, <clears throat> Attorney Christine Tree is here representing the citizen petitioner and will give a presentation of the proposed zoning amendment at this time. Attorney Tree? Thank you. Um, I do have a PowerPoint presentation. I do right here. Yep. I think it's
see it. and my client tonight, um, members of the city council, members of the planning board. Um, I do have a PowerPoint presentation, as you can see, on this proposed zoning map amendment. Um, we are proposing that a certain section of West Broadway be changed from the commercial two zone to the GR3 zone. Um, my client's motivation in doing this is we have a 45 unit uh, residential development that she would like to. Better? Um, that she would like to construct. <laughs> um, I'd offer to sit down, but then nobody would see me. Um, so that is her motivation in proposing the zoning amendment. Um, how, and I will go through some details of this at the end of the presentation. However, my client's motivation for submitting this proposed zone amendment is not a reason to vote for it. It's not a reason to vote against it. We believe that the zoning amendment is beneficial to the district regardless of our project because the current zoning does not match the current <coughs> use of the parcels in the district. Um, and that's what I am going to go through and show you today. The planning board has seen a version of this presentation. Um, my uh, paralegal decided it would be better to be more colorful, so if it's a little much, I do apologize. Um, so basically, uh, the what, where, and why. Again, there is a, a region at the end of West Broadway in Ward 3. It goes from Templeton Line um, to about Kendall Pond. And that is currently zoned mainly commercial two. However, there are some parcels which are also split between districts so that they are partially con two, partially R2. Um, and, and those split parcels do create a lot of difficulty my client does have uh, one of those split parcels, two of them, I believe, actually. Um, and it does create difficulty where you have um, a residential district and then a commercial district um, on the same parcel. It's difficult to find a use that will satisfy both of them. Um, this does say 19 parcels. It's technically 20. Um, my client has three parcels out of those 20 that we're looking to change the zoning on. Um, this change would make all of the parcels in this district conforming according to zoning. So that means um, they, are most, they are residential in nature. Right now, even a single family homeowner in this district has a use that is not allowed in the district because COM2 zoning does not allow a single family home. And therefore, everything has been built either with a variance or predate zoning. And that means if a homeowner, even a single family homeowner, who wants to go and modify or expand um, their property, they may need to seek a special permit or other relief through um, the ZBA, through the planning board. This seems like an unnecessary burden on those single family homeowners. From my client's point of view, the change in district would allow our project to be considered under a special permit and site plan review rather than a variance. And so this does not result in the automatic allowance of my client's project. It just allows it to proceed under a different standard, one that respects the needs of the community but does allow for some development. So um, again, just a summary. I, I think this is what I just went through. The parcels are all either vacant or residential in the area that we're proposing to change. 
Um, and again, none of them are conforming. Um, the commercial uses, however, that are allowed by right under the current zoning are not compatible with those residential uses. I will go through the, a list of those a little bit later on, but they include things like a hotel, a motor vehicle repair, um, even a bus station, not that one's gonna go out there, um, but these things can be put in by right without that kind of special oversight that's offered by the zoning board and the planning board to respect the concerns of the surrounding residences. So this is an overview. We're over in the uh, corner of West Broadway, Broadway over by Templeton. This runs through to the Templeton line. <coughs> and this is um, a display of the current zoning. Um, I did get a question from one of the counselors earlier, um, just making sure that they understood where the proposed change was. Um, the next uh, slide will show it a little better, um, but hopefully I can be a laser pointer for a moment. Right here is the area of the proposed change. Um, so as you can see, If I were to get a little closer up on that part, on that area, the purple con two district splits some of the lots. Some of those lots are in two districts. Um, this, uh, again, presents difficulty for any kind of development. The yellow is the parcels that we propose to change. And again, just for reference, this is where Kendall Pond is, right about here off the map. Um, my client owns this parcel, this parcel, and this parcel. And that's where uh, we would look to develop. Um, this is Deer Hill Road. This was put in entirely by variance. Um, all of the remaining parcels are single family residential dwellings and they predate zoning. The type is a little bit difficult on that one, but what's to know is there is there are three parcels at the top that are owned by my client. They are currently vacant land. Every other affected parcel is a single family dwelling. The current zoning um, in the targeted area, uh, uh, again, just doesn't match what the use is. The conformity, as you can see, under the current zoning, either there's a variance or a pre-existing non-conformity on all parcels. The three parcels owned by my client are marked as uh, not permitted simply because under current zoning, the multifamily use that they want to develop in um, is not allowed. Uh, therefore, we would uh, be required to seek a variance. After the change, this would be GR3. Um, and I will say that after we had put the proposed amendment in, we did notice that a little corner of PAX land, which we hadn't proposed to change, um, remains calm too. Um, I would think that it would be appropriate for that to be moved into RR2 um, or moved into GR3, but we have no opinion on that. Um, I don't know that PAC intends to develop it also, um, but either of those two changes would bring PAC, uh, PAC into um, a use district that is more in line with its actual current use. You're talking about the PA. Yeah. Um, the Polish American Citizens uh, <coughs> Club. Who um, owns that com too that you were showing in, in, the, in that last slide? Yes. So that's a corner of their current parcel. We didn't want to change um, the zoning on their property. Um, I, I don't have any input from them as to what their wishes would be. 
the rest of their parcel is all R2. Um, I would think that they would appreciate having a parcel that's all in one zone, um, but I, I don't have any opinion on to what, as to whether it should be GR3 or, or R2 without their input. So, so the uses, as I said, that are allowed by right and current zoning are actually detrimental to the current owners, um, as well as the lot splits ac across district. And oh, it's fancy. Um, if we go to the uh, table of residential uses and we look at um, in this column right here, what is currently allowed um, and this column right here, uh, what we propose, um, you can see that in a single family home, COM2 says NP, that means not permitted. So single family homes are not permitted in this area, yet that is all of the development that there is. Um, and just to highlight a few of them, I'm not sure that the swipes enhance the presentation, but I hope they do. Um, So a single family home is not permitted under current zoning, it would be permitted, which means that a single family homeowner could seek modification of their dwelling, they could seek to add a garage, um, as long as they're not violating the zoning setbacks, as long as they're not undersized, they could do that without that extra step of, of oversight um, from the city that really doesn't add much most of the time. Um, same thing with a two-family dwelling. It's not currently permitted, but if somebody wanted to add on a separate unit, um, especially with the way the housing market is going, um, we do have people uh, living multi-generationally now. This would allow them to do that without that extra step. Um, however, if you look at what current zoning is, a hotel or motel is permitted just with a building permit right now and that is entirely inappropriate for the area that we're in. Under the new zoning, it would be not permitted. If we look at the business uses, again, just picking out a few examples, um, a medical office building would be permitted by right under current zoning. Um, it would not be permitted. Medical office building has um, several uh, kind of meanings. Uh, some districts will treat that simply as a doctor's office. Others will also include different types of therapy, um, in, including some rehabilitative therapy that might not be appropriate right next to a, residenti a, a residence. Convenience stores would be allowed by right. Um, retail stores under 15,000 square feet allowed by right. Um, and a bank allowed by right. Uh, these are not permitted. Um, the retail store is permitted under special permit, um, but uh, the convenience store is uh, permitted under special permit. They would not be permitted under the new zoning. Um, same thing with the motor vehicle uh, services, um, and that could be regular motor vehicle service, motor vehicle sales facility, um, uh, and general repairs. Uh, so again, there's more protection for the residential owners under the proposed zoning. Same thing with a restaurant. Restaurant could go in by right, including a restaurant with live entertainment. Live entertainment, of course, would be very disruptive to the residential neighborhood. Um, and then just a couple final examples. Um, outdoor amusements, and as I said, a bus station, would be permitted by right uh, in, in the current zoning, they would be not permitted in the proposal. Uh, so I, I've said this several different ways, but what we're looking to do is having a, have a zoning map amendment. We're not looking to create a new type of zone. Um, we are just uh, trying to reclassify these parcels. We believe it would be beneficial for the parcel owners and for the, parcel, for the city because it would allow um, the residential uses to go on uninterrupted. This is Route 2A. 
And I think perhaps when this zoning originally went in a number of years ago, uh, there was a thought that we wanted to allow for commercial development along this route, it's a natural thought. Um, however, that is not what has happened in actual practice. And given the current existence of those residences, allowing that kind of unfettered commercial development to take place would be very disrupted. It would not be the most appropriate use of that property. Um, there is, as I said, some limited commercial development that is allowed, but it's allowed with oversight from the city. If it's an appropriate use, like a very small convenience store, like a coin-operated laundromat, that is not going to give a lot of um, interference with the residential uses. The boards can allow that. They can impose conditions like hours of operation. They can impose conditions on how the lights are directed so as not to shine on the surrounding properties. Um, and they can make sure that they're not operated as a public nuisance. Um, so for these reasons, we do believe that the amendment is beneficial. I am going to talk a little bit about the project, but as I said at the beginning, it is not a reason to vote for or vote against this proposal. Um, and I am presenting this information simply because it's uh, required by your zoning <coughs> ordinance. I don't um, want anyone to uh, undertake something that would be considered spot zoning. Um, the project, however, is 45 units. They are townhouse style units. Um, the construction is intended to proceed in two phases. Um, in the first phase, most of the units constructed would be sold as condominiums. Um, we believe this is an appropriate development for either young professionals who are starting off and can locate in Gardner, um, or older Gardner residents who might want to downsize so that they don't have home maintenance, but they want to stay in the city. Um, and we believe these units would provide some quality options for both of those categories of people. Um, uh, Gardner has a lot of uh, rental uh, housing. This is intended to be, um, obviously, market rate sales. Um, the portion of units that are intended to be rented are intended to be market rate uh, units. Um, we also have uh, put together plans which maintain a 50-foot buffer surrounding the property from the other abutting properties. Um, so we, do, uh, we are looking for a project that's not going to provide any substantial detriment to the neighborhood. As I said, a special permit will be required, um, and that would be issued by the ZBA or not issued by the ZBA. Um, and after that, then the uh, site plan review will be undertaken by the planning board. Um, they can impose some very specific conditions about landscaping, light direction, phases of construction, making sure the property is kept clean during construction. Um, and <coughs> the ZBA would be, have the ability to reject the project. Um, so that your vote, as I said tonight, on this amendment does not um, assure us that the project would pass. Gardner maintains its oversight over the passage of this project. Um, we believe this will increase the uh, quality um, market rate housing stock available in Gardner. Um, and uh, we think it would provide um, a benefit because this parcel and these, these set of three parcels due to the split zoning district um, and due to the fact that one of them is a little bit in Templeton, um, they've been undevelopable. Uh, Con 2 and R2, and that's what they're split between, the only uses that are really allowed in both districts are things like parks or golf courses or municipal uses. Um, and uh, this would bring this property back into the tax rolls at, at a substantial, substantial increase of its current valuation. Um, this is, I can get to it, just a layout of the project. 
Um, this is the first parcel that you saw and the second connecting parcel. And then this is the third larger 10 acre parcel in the rear. The, par the project does not extend much into the 10 acres. Um, there are some topographical challenges. <coughs> Sorry, cold. Some topographical challenges and some soil challenges to that rear parcel. Um, that at, at current, uh, you know, the current evaluation make it seem like development would be a long way and a lot of money away. I'll, I'll put it that way. Um, the first phase would be approximately this area, and the second phase would be in this area. The second phase is intended to be rental units, um, and uh, the company Private Oversight is a family company, Joanne Tavanos, the um, member manager, her son Anthony um, uh, works in the company. Their intent is to retain this property um, as a family business uh, into the foreseeable future. So um, you should be dealing with the people who are the owners on a long-term basis um, of this project. This somewhat more detailed uh, overview uh, shows some of the topographical issues and um, the challenges that we would face in development. Um, at the top, uh, in the area of the proposed development, they're surmountable. As you get down into that back parcel, it's quite, again, there's a huge slope in that back parcel right now. Um, and then finally, this is a visual of the proposed townhome condominiums. Um, so each unit is an up and down unit. There's a single car garage and there is a single parking space in front of that garage. Um, uh, we are looking for this to be a quality development um, and quality construction and establish a long-term relationship with the city of Gardner and its people. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. I want to thank everyone uh, for taking the time to listen to the presentation and take this under consideration today. Um, my client is also here if there are any questions for her. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Attorney Tree. I'd like to ask the City Council's and Planning Board members uh, to hold their questions until citizens that are present have an opportunity to speak and ask their questions. I declare the public hearing open. Does anyone wish to be heard in favor of the proposed zoning amendment? Does anybody wish to be heard in favor of the proposed zoning amendment? Does anyone wish to be heard in favor of the proposed zoning amendment? Okay, does anyone wish to be heard in opposition of the proposed zoning amendment? Does anyone wish to be heard in opposition of the proposed zoning amendment? Does anyone wish to be heard in, in opposition of the opposed, proposed zoning amendment. If you can just come up to the podium, just state your name and your address, please. Right here? Yep, just state your name and your address for the record, please. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for having me here. My name is Jane Kia, and I live on, the, on 30 Deer Hill Road. Um, I don't know if I'm in favor or against, I just have a question. And my, one of my questions is that I was hearing that we have a well on 30 Deer Hill Road. So my question will be, how does this project impact our water system? That will be the first question. And the second question is about the rental unit. Uh, is it apartment complex or what is being described here as rental unit? So far, those are my two questions. Um, so to answer your questions, uh, the first uh, question is about your well. Um, the proposal would hook this project up to the city water and sewer so that there wouldn't be any additional draw from any of the uh, water available underground um, that supplies your well. Um, as far as drainage, uh, we have had some questions um, during the initial phase of this project about drainage. We are proposing that adequate drainage um, from this property direct any groundwater 
towards the front of the property next to the road where there it will be a drainage trough so that it does not um, seep onto any neighboring properties. Um, as far as the units that are to be constructed, um, this picture, as I said, shows the units two stories. Um, in this portion where it's condominiums, it is uh, one unit, one unit, one unit, so it's up and down. Um, in some of the other areas, there is uh, one unit on the bottom, one unit on the second floor, mm -hmm. up same, and down. It's the same, it's going to be a condo, it's going to be a townhouse. I'm it actually... It may not be a garage, it'll <coughs> be a couple spots, but it will, be, mm -hmm. it will look just like this. It's, yeah. These will be rentable. Okay. Um, so does that answer your question? Can I ask if... if I yeah, just come to the podium and just state your name and your address, please. My name is Louise Casey and I live on 22 Deer Hill Road. Our, one of the concerns, uh, because we have the wells, and I know they'll be to put into the city water, but will they have to do any blasting? I know in building, there's a lot of times there's blasting in order to get the foundations made and all of that, which can then change the way the water's going to go down to our wells. Um, I've heard of a lot of foundations being cracked and things like that when they have to do blasting and that concerns me as to what are our foundations going to look like after this big um, new settlement comes in and um, and all that they have to do will it affect our homes in any way because it's pretty close to where the, our backyard is thank you um, so so first of all just just to be very clear um, this project would still have to go before the ZBA and the planning board. This is not approval of the project. Um, and the ZBA and the planning board um, would normally impose conditions to make sure that homeowners aren't affected um, by these types of issues. Um, I don't know that there's been any need found for blasting at this point. Well, no, talking to the engineers early on, there shouldn't be any blasting, and we're only doing slabs, so there won't be pulled out. Yeah, there won't be pulled out uh, basement. So our plan is to put a slab because we don't want any water issues in. Well, we're, 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 we're concerned, especially me, because you're building those condos right in back of my backyard. Your excuse me, excuse me, I'm sorry, you have to come up to the podium. We need the microphone and we just need your name and address for the record. Thank you. It, it really will affect me. I live on 16 Deer Hill Road and those condos are going to be built directly in my backyard. So they're saying 50 feet, which is not very much, in back of my backyard and it's hill. So if their water in any way starts draining down, my, my cellar is going to be flooded and my yard is going to be flooded. So I am concerned about them building back there. Um, of any way that it's going to, it's going to disturb our, our wells because we all, our whole street just lives on wells. So that means if that happens, we have to all go on city water, which is not fair to us because we, you know, we, we pay for the sewage and stuff, but we don't pay for the city water because we, we opted not to. But we'll have to go into the we'll have to go into um, the city water if that happens, and there's no way that they can tell us for sure that that won't happen, because we have a lot of ledge that's in back there, so something's going to have to happen while they're trying to construct these things, and and all of us that are right in, right in the back of that are really concerned about our homes. Can you just state your name too, please? Oh, my name is Diane Lopezic. Thank you. Um, I, I very much appreciate that you want to make sure that your home remains as it is um, and that, you know, there's no crack foundation, there's no groundwater, um, and it's certainly not my client's intention in any way, shape, or form to direct groundwater onto your property. The close-up that I've just brought up um, shows the topography leading down to the front of the property in this area right, I'm not a laser pointer. Um, this area right here uh, is where the trenches and the drainage system would be located to make sure that that uh, drainage does not go off to the side. 
Um, I believe you're over on this side. Yes, ma'am. Um, and the 50-foot boundary um, would also, it, it would be vegetation. It would be undisturbed land. Um, right here is where the proposed road goes. And there's a gradient up, and then there's a gradient down. Um, any groundwater would have to be directed to the sides. Again, that's going to direct back into that drainage system. What I would say as well, the proposed change in zoning would prevent something that I think would be much more detrimental to your home, which is a business operation going in there by right without any kind of oversight by a municipal board. Um, it, that kind of use is definitely going to result in groundwater because there's going to be a large paved area to service any commercial establishment. There's going to be a parking lot um, that's going to be much bigger in size than what is proposed, which is just what is necessary to the residential uses. Um, so so I, I understand and I would encourage you to express your concerns so that we can make sure they're addressed um, when there's, hopefully, there's a special permit application. Because um, I do want to make sure that we work with you to address them. But this amendment, I think, is a step in the right direction, um, even given your concerns. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak in opposition of the proposed zoning amendment? The City Council Planning Board members, are there any other questions or comments? Would anyone else like to be heard at this time? Uh, Councilor Bujo? I'd like to thank the people that brought this forward and Attorney Tree for <coughs> bringing me out a few months ago. I wish we would have went out now because it was really buggy when we went out. I would also like to thank the residents of Deer Hill Road, Ward 3, for coming out tonight. Please feel free to reach out at any time. I want to hear what you have to say, 100%. So I, I live one street away from you guys. So reach out. My, I'm available at all times. I'm looking to talk to you about this before, before any vote comes forward. I don't have any questions. You guys have been great. But I thank the <coughs> president and the council, the planning board, for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Further questions, Councillor? How long is that road from the highway to the goals? Um, I believe we measured the road to be under 900 feet. I know that there is a regulation regarding that. <coughs> Any other questions or comments? Councilor Boone? Thank you, Madam President. My only question, um, not in regards to the development, but across from Tuway, there's commercial facilities mm -hmm. on that side, uh, the gym, the old veterinary office. And honestly, I don't know what it is right now. Um, and some other commercial property. So cha are we changing that property as well to residential? And would there be any commercial? I drove by it uh, last weekend. And would there be any detriment to removing the commercial for that property across from Tua? And I'm sure the planning board have discussed that. They're all in favor of this. So I was just curious your thoughts on that. Um, this, uh, so I'm trying to bring up the right slide um, to show the area. Okay. Okay. Those commercial uses are located in this area right here. Um, and we don't propose to change that area. It was outside of the interest of uh, the area of our concern. Um, I will say that when we first started looking at this um, a while back, we did look at uh, a little bit what the uses in the district are and what their conformity is. Um, and of the parcels in the district that were unoccupied, um, I believe they're and I should know this because I've repeated it about 20 times to, um, to the board, uh, 28 parcels that are, are occupied. <coughs> Seven of them are conforming. So um, the current zoning 
it may allow for a couple of these uses. Um, the animal control is a municipal use, so that's allowed by right. Um, uh, the office is allowed, uh, the gym is allowed, um, Lithuanian Outing Association, DNA Holdings, um, and then there's an electric supply company. Um, but we did think that they might be better served by a COM1 designation um, at some point in the future because it would allow the parcels that are not conforming in that area to become conforming. Um, and those would be things like uh, a self-storage area, um, see, a truck terminal, um, and these are down in this um, area away from those re that residential district. But it would still, in COM 1, you would still be able to build a single family home. And um, given the proximity of Kendall, uh, Lake, Kendall Lake, Kendall Pond, oh. Kendall Pond, um, having that single family home use available as, as allowed by right, I think is always appropriate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any further questions, comments, Councilor Bellows? Well, just to be clear, Attorney Tree, it's everything south of West Broadway, correct, is with the proposed change, with that, all that purple um, down. So, and to the left, actually, too, um, I guess. But yeah. other than the one parcel that's part of the PA. Um, <laughs> it, is, it, it is both sides of Broadway, but it begins right here. Okay. And it goes, uh, because my client owns these three parcels, mm -hmm. it goes down to here. Yeah. And then excludes PAX parcels. So it is the few <laughs> residential homes across the street as well. Correct. Thank you. Further questions or comments, or is there any comments that you've heard on the topic of the meeting? Okay, I will declare the joint public hearing now closed. Thank you. Uh,